All right, guys. So I'm here on a Zoom meeting with Brandon, the general manager at Kitfox. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, he reached out to me after seeing a video on my uh, door frames where I had to order all the new parts because I, I cut too much from one side and it just made the parts all scrap at that point. So um, we're going to work together here to um, answer a lot of general questions that people have had about doors. Uh, he's gotten a lot of questions and well, I just want to for me, I just want to prevent other people from making the same mistake I did and having to order more parts and it creates more work for them and more work for everybody else. So uh, we'll uh, dive in here. So yeah, you're right, Aaron. It is something we get a lot of questions on. And, and once it's done, people can kind of look at it and say, oh, I, I get the concept now. But struggling through it isn't any fun. So. I kind of reached out to you to say, hey, let's let's maybe make something accessible for people to, to refer to or we can refer people to that kind of gives them an idea of, of what we've got figured out here at the factory and kind of what we envision when everything comes together. And that might help speed up the process for some people and, and in some cases not have to to uh, you know order new parts, that sort of thing. All right. Um, well, I think. The biggest, the biggest takeaway that I have after now, now mine are done. I, I still have some issues that it's going to require a little bit of super fill, but um, the biggest thing is to make sure uh, you're cutting with both ends needing cut in mind. I think every piece needs a cut from both ends. So you don't want to take too much off of one. And in fact, I have, I have one of my pieces still. Let me grab one. That they, you'll sell these as templates for uh, for a premium price. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I, this is a this is a what not to do. So oh, I see. <laughs> uh, I cut from one side, and on top of that, I cut the inside um, for the bottom of the door frame, and uh, that makes this piece pretty much completely unusable at that point. Um, yep. If I wouldn't have cut this part here, I probably could have used it for one of the shorter ones, but I didn't, <laughs> I cut it. So um, how do you guys usually cut them? So one of the things, like you said, you know, kind of planning to cut at both ends. One of the things that, that we do is we overlap the joints quite a bit. And some people try and fit them net. And some people do just a little overlap, but we actually do, do quite a bit of overlap. Um, We've got a airplane here with the doors finished, uh, the door frames at least uh, finished. So we can kind of look in on that. Uh, we started doing a bunch of body work on them. And like you said, it requires some body work, but you know, some of these end up overlapping and you end up having to transition the, the body work off the corners and things like that. Um, over here on this piece log, let me show you. A couple of things. So these are actually the window frames. This is where I start. And we're going to fit these back here. You've got to relief it around these tabs and get this to intersect properly with this vertical piece here. And so I kind of start with this top piece and I start with this vertical piece. And once I get those married, then I can start kind of bringing everything else together. These pieces here, you have what looks like two lefts and two rights, but it's actually a, a left top and a left bottom and then a right top and a right bottom. So, you know, People try and get the two lefts together, but they, they'll never work. And then I don't know if you can see it very well in the picture, but this is kind of narrow at one end, a little wider at the other end. The wider goes towards the top of the frame, and the narrower will kind of transition down off into the fuselage tubing. And so the first thing we're going to do is come in here, kind of notch, can you get around here and see? We're going to come in here and just kind of mark this. To where these tabs clear by putting a slot up in here and then that will drop down to this main tube if that makes sense and you may have to you know nip these inside corners a little bit to clear any of these uh, weld intersections and that can start fitting up there and yep. you always want to you always want to clear the welds that's that's one of the most important things is just making sure that nothing is sitting up on a weld it's not resting on a weld because that's going to kind of change the geometry and kind of mess with you a little bit 
And I've taken this one and kind of already started shaping it and, and trimming away at it. But this would be the vertical piece here. And basically what I've done is trimmed around the weld up here, at the top of the door frame. And I put just a little bit of an angle here, which happens to be the same angle that this is gonna intersect at. And so those are gonna end up overlapping once I clear those tabs and this can sit down on the tabs. And then kind of the, the tricky part starts to be down here at this point where this then intersects this uh, angled piece kind of midstream. And what you're gonna see is we put these little relief cuts in here, which allows this metal to bend in. So that kind of allows everything to start coming together. And then we can kind of force these into place and get the right shape that we want because we've got these little relief cuts. And sometimes those will be, you know, an inch long. Here we're, only, we're starting at about a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch in. But by the time we're done, we may end up with a, a full one inch slice down that, uh, that bend right there just to allow everything to kind of, you know, form and shape nicely to that door frame. Then that'll get a rivet and high saw, and then we can body fill that later. We can shape these off to where that has a nice radius to it. I guess the main the main takeaway is don't be afraid to cut away at these things. <laughs> you know, you can make these kind of as you kind of make those tabs, you can make these kind of bend and flex up a little bit. You know, giving a nice gradual turn in that door joggle. Yeah, that's a much better way than what I did. <laughs> <laughs> those, those relief cuts make a lot more sense. I uh, I, I can't show you, Brandon, but I'll I'll show. I'll show everybody at home because um, I have a different camera here and uh, uh, Brandon's obviously looks far better than mine, but uh, you can see I, I did the same cut up here, but it's a little shorter. I cut around the weld like he did um, down here. Instead of doing relief cuts, I just kind of trimmed slowly until I could get them to, to more or less meet. And I figured, well, I can do the rest with body work. Um, and the same down here, um, those, those relief cuts would make this look a lot nicer, at least at this point. Uh, I'm sure nobody's going to notice when I get the body work on there, but um, it, it would save a lot of body work just do the relief cuts right away. There, there's another point that, that I probably should make as one of the reasons we would like to massage these around a little bit. Um, if we take a straight piece of metal, let me grab, hang on just a second. So if I take a straight edge, I, I lay it on this piece of door frame and I run it down to this tube at the bottom of the fuselage, that's kind of simulating how the fabric is going to go and transition off of this door frame piece down to that bottom of the fuselage. If it's sticking out too far, it kind of creates a sharp edge on the fabric and it, it looks it looks like it's kind of poking out. If it's in too far, you're not gonna get a good bond of the fabric for this piece here. So having these relieved allows us to kind of pull things in and kind of massage things to where we get a good straight line off of here down to the tube, you know, at the bottom of the fuselage. Same thing off of this tube here. We're gonna kind of massage this in so that we get a good angle where the fabric comes off there down to the bottom tube. And then same thing with your door frame or your, excuse me, your window frames. So I don't have one in here, but you would come up and measure off of this window frame down to the fuselage. Actually to your stringer, excuse me, your stringer would be in here. So you'd measure off that window frame down to your stringer and make sure that that, ain't, that is angled correctly. And well, you can rotate those around the tube and you can, you can kind of really play with those quite a bit if you've got the reliefs to be able to massage and bend and tweak and torque. And do what you need to. That's torque, not twerk. <laughs> what uh, what do you guys use to cut to cut those? That's a good question. So uh, just a fiberglass cutoff wheel, uh, a Dremel tool, uh, and you can get different thicknesses and different weights. Some some people will use the real small ones, but they tend to kind of blow up and and uh, you know they can cut you if they fly off. So we use the fiberglass reinforced ones, which are just a little bigger diameter and a little thicker, and they hold up better. 
but okay. yeah, you can just uh, you can use a band saw to kind of do your rough cuts and then do the, the cut off wheel to get in some of the detail work. I don't know what I did with them, but I was using tin snips. <laughs> yeah, sure, that works too. Definitely, I did do the uh, the the top notch cuts uh, for the window frame with a uh, I think a diamond cut off wheel, um, <laughs> just because like there's no way else to get a slot cut in there. So, yep. um, but like Brandon, I started at the top and uh kind of worked my way down because i mean everything's based off of that window frame where those two notches are so um yeah what's uh well, if, you, if you don't mind let me point out one more thing as we get to the front of the fuselage some people kind of struggle with envisioning how this all works with your boot cowl there's a little piece of angle that gets glued in down here and same thing we're gonna we're gonna slice up here and this will end up being cut back maybe an inch and a half to two inches. And that allows this to kind of come in and transition. And there's a couple of things to consider here, how this is gonna finish off and transition to this little angle piece that gets glued in and your transition to your boot cow. And if you bring this all the way out to where this piece is just as a stock length, your boot cow is gonna be in quite a bit from this piece and it's gonna hang out. And by the time you get fabric on there and everything else, it looks, it looks like it's misplaced. So what we do is we slice back in here along this, this bend line, and that allows us to kind of run a, a smooth uh, breakaway and tie into this piece here. Let's flip over to this other fuselage. You should get stiffeners, rib stiffeners in the kit, which would be these little pieces of uh, you know, two and a half millimeter plywood. We just clamp one of those in place, and then you can bond this angle uh, using that as your spacer. And that's about the same thickness as the, the composite boot cowl that comes down. And then we end up with a nice smooth transition across there. And you can do a little body work on the bottom, kind of, you know, pretty that up and make it nice. And then, you know, you, this all just comes together really, really, really well. Yeah, that's a so. great, uh, a great point out there. Cause uh, like, I haven't even done that part yet because I didn't, I've asked five people what the, the width of the blue cow is and nobody really has an idea off the top of their head. So uh, yeah, I have a, like, 10 of those laying around I can just yeah that's that's great <laughs> yeah that, that's something that you know you should have a couple pieces of scrap and you can just easily clamp them in place and you can actually clamp that to the wood that angle you can clamp that to the wood bond it all in place and it'll stay without a problem overnight while it cures cool trying to think what, what else uh what, what other questions do you do you get uh as far as those door frames go um, that that covers a bunch of it. Uh, one of the one of the things we do is, you know, you're supposed to rivet the stringer into place back here. Let's actually jump over this one. So this one here shows that the stringer is is transitioning nicely off of this door frame, and you can rivet here. You'd also rivet these pieces together, and then we usually put a big dollop of glue high saw back in here just to kind of hold that thing in place. Make sure you know nothing's moving around. You don't end up with fabric distorting or anything else from that moving so just kind of lock that in place uh, obviously the body work and everything makes a lot of sense here you can do a couple of things on the rivets so there we actually use flush rivets in each of these corners of the window frame and as well as these intersections here <clears throat> the best thing the best way to do those is actually to match drill them together once they're in the place you want and then use a dimple if you dimple them then everything just kind of stays aligned and you can just pop your rivets in there, no problem, easy. Uh, the other thing you can do is countersink them, but it doesn't quite stay aligned quite as well as if you were to temper it. So that would be the other thing is just, uh, you know, borrow, beg, steal, check for EAA club, you know, see if your local chapter has a dimpler that you can borrow or somebody on the airport has a dimpler uh, or buy one. They're, they're not horrible, but they are a little pricey. So, and, and it's not something you're going to use all the time. So if you can find one, that, that's a better way to go. Let me find it really quick. I actually have a neat little dimpling tool that I picked up for about six dollars. Wow. I think. Send me the link. Yeah, I will, of course. <laughs> uh it's it's uh oh, I can't find it right now on my giant desk of messiness, but uh I'll I'll send you a link. It's from I think aircraft tool supply. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's 
what it is is a it's a screw with two pieces of shaped steel there you go or uh it's a nail and then you put it in your rivet gun uh you slide the nail through the hole with the two pieces and then you just rivet it in the rivet puller dimples the two pieces of metal nice and it's uh it works <laughs> like I, i've tested it on a couple things and it it works pretty well for what it is and i was like even if you go through it uh you can just buy another one and you're still way less than you ever would be on a, a full squeezer yeah full squeezer you know is generally going to run a couple hundred bucks uh, for a good one and with, with the different fittings that you're going to use for squeezing the solid rivets and dimpling and things like that but uh but yeah that sounds like the ticket there that you've got yeah uh i'll send you a link and i'll put a link in the video as well um perfect for any of those that want to try it uh even if you tried it on a couple pieces of scrap metal and didn't like the way it looked i mean you're only out a couple bucks so um yeah i uh i haven't done any of that i match drilled the holes and uh I uh, got the phone call from you, so I was just going to hold off. <laughs> and uh, cool. Well, I I don't have anything else. I think um, you've offered uh, quite a few good points here. So uh, any questions that I could have? Hopefully, hopefully they'll be helpful. For sure. Hopefully they'll be helpful. It's one of those things that you know, we we get we get to do them every day. So we we learn the little nuances and little tips and tricks, and we we're trying to share them as we can. And and so I appreciate you taking the time and letting us uh, jump in here. We try and let people just build their airplanes the way they want them, but sometimes it's uh, it's helpful to have a little, little uh, uh, what do they call it, the secret menu. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially on stuff like this where it's kind of subjective as it is. So it's like, well, there's about 50 ways to do this. So what's the most efficient way? Put it that way. Uh, and if somebody figures out a better way, boy, please call me. Let me know. <laughs> All right. Uh, this, this this is how we've managed to get you know consistent results and and just kind of paying attention to some of those details I was talking about. We're blocking the metal and kind of tweaking the metal. Don't be afraid to move stuff around to, to get it to fit right. And at the end of the day, you're probably going to use some high saw and some filler and things like that. And that's all okay. It's going to work out just fine. Cool. Yeah, I've I've found that out working on my tail ends that uh, the body work uh, does a lot. <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, I don't think I have anything else. So, um, well, Brandon, thanks for answering all those questions. And uh, My pleasure. I hope everybody out there and uh, at home can benefit from this. And anybody uh, that you guys refer to this video, uh, it really helps them with these door frames.